So now let's sum it all up into a conclusion. And as usual, let's start with the cons. The first con for me is that even though the battery life is definitely improved and much better than we have it on Super Note A6X, a slight, slight con is that the battery life I think is, while good, can be improved a little bit more to get it into that excellent range, because I definitely think that the platform can do it. This is gonna be a con for some, but I think when taken into a context for me, it's not. And I am guilty of mentioning it as a con in the A6X simply because I did not understand the platform yet. However, it is something that needs to be mentioned and that is that on the Supernote platform, A5X or A6X, it doesn't matter at the moment, you don't have full page or document um, handwriting recognition or search. So if that's something that you're looking for and depending on, um, it doesn't have it, but it does have these titles and keyword functionalities, which for me personally, when I started using them, I was blown away because it's far more productive. Because as I said, you actually get to build up an entire table of contents for your handwritten notebook, which no other platform actually can do. So while you don't have a dedicated page document handwritten recommendation, uh, recognition for the entire thing, you do have this other thing, but either way, you should be aware of uh, how that works. So I just wanted to clarify it. PDF formatting of documents, while what we have is good and the yeah the, the, the scaling of the page works, it's fairly rudimentary. And I think that it would be beneficial if the platform at some point could get an update with some more sophisticated tools to allow for maybe two page viewing, a landscape view or things like that, basically to kind of make it a little bit more flexible so that it can be usable even with uh, more non-friendly PDF uh, documents. In a notebook side of things, even though this is a most definitely a device for those who write, right? Um, so it's a note-taking device primarily, and as such, we do lack brushes uh, that would be leaning more towards the sketching and drawing sides of things. So. It would be good if at some point uh, in the future we would get actually updates which offer like a pencil brush or um, something like that that can be used for sketching and drawing because it seems like the pl pl platform is uh, adequate enough with layers and shades of gray and all that kind of stuff to be able to do that. But at the moment you should be aware that it's a very limited set of brushes and you have the non-pressure sensitive one, pressure sensitive one, and the kind of marker type of a brush, all of which are primarily kind of centered around writing, not so much for sketching and drawing. That being said, with the brushes that you do have, you can do inking out of the drawings. That's something that you most definitely can do. Another negative I think at the moment is that there is no option to choose a non-rasterized export of the PDF handwritten uh, documents. So what that means is that it, when you do your notebook handwriting and you export, it's what I talked about, well, it just exports rasterized, which means that scaling is gonna be pixelated and there's no anti-aliasing uh, upon export applied either. So the result, I think the exported result of handwritten um, uh, notes is unnecessarily lo-fi and I th hope that we actually see that improved fairly soon. Now for me this is most definitely not a con but it will be a con for some people. This is a device that does not have a front light so if that's a requirement that you're looking for this one doesn't have it. And this is another thing that could be a con for some people. For me personally, it's not, but it's not a positive either. Um, and that's regarding the design itself, is the exact same housing that we had on the A5. So same as the A6X. Now there's nothing wrong with it. It's beautifully built and excellent quality and all that stuff that I actually showed and talked about. It's just that, you know, when you're moving from an A5 to an A5X, you don't have anything outside to kind of tell you that you've upgraded to a new device. So I think that could have been a little bit of a, you know, a nicer thing to have. But then again, uh, this is such a nice device and such a good design that I can't really fault it for that. But I just wanted to mention that there's no real any significant difference between the housing or the the external design of the between the Supernote A5 or the A5X. And that could be a con for some. And now on to the positives of the Supernote A5X. I think it's, again, as the A6X was, but this is even better because it's a larger format, 
it has an outstanding focus on the note-taking capabilities and note-taking type of use case scenario. As such, it just works brilliantly. Indeed, it is a device for those who write. I love the immediacy of the platform, as in, as soon as you open the cover, before you're even able to kind of finish flipping it over and taking the pen and starting to write, the device is ready. So basically your digital notebook is ready immediately to continue where you left off. And I think this is a hugely beneficial type of thing and a very, very important thing to have. Now, all of the devices are more or less immediately ready, but this is very, very noticeable on the Supernote A5X. Not just the performance, but everything around it. When you click uh, to create a notebook, you can set up your default template and it just, bam, you're there. It's immediately ready. You click on plus and your notebook is there and you start writing. There's no unnecessary steps like first name the notebook, do this, do that. No, somebody freaking understood that when you create a new notebook, it's a very high likelihood that you want to start writing immediately and afterwards you can rename it and do all of these kinds of things. So as such, there's so many of these tiny, tiny hairline fine tunings that are in the platform, but they all amount to uh, offering you a different experience. And that's something that I really appreciate with the Supernote. Writing experience. As I've talked at length, even in this video as well, um, the combination of the soft film, everlasting nib, and all of these kinds of things, everything put combined, is a unique type of writing experience that I really, really love. And actually, for me personally, just the feel of it, not the speed, not all of that kind of stuff, but just the feel of it, I prefer how it feels and how the comfort level is on the Supernote A5X to the Remarkable 2. Now, I know that's a hugely controversial thing to say. I still think that Remarkable 2 is, is the fastest one for sure, and it's extremely good, don't get me wrong. It's just that they are very different. So, Remarkable 2 is absolutely magnificent and excellent on one hand. Uh, Supernote A5X is not as fast, but it does offer a lot of unique things that Remarkable 2 doesn't have, which kind of, in my eyes at least, raise it to the level of equally awesome but different. So you have awesome here and awesome there. It's just that what type of awesomeness suits you, um, that's something that you have to choose. As far as I'm concerned, no books device can compete with either of these two. You can improve the writing experience on the books devices with the uh, better nib and uh, better screen protector and all that kind of stuff. All of those things definitely improve the um, overall writing experience. But if we're talking about the devices, on their own without any specialized accessories or what you get in the package. Um, yeah, the books devices are under these two guys and on top we have uh, Remarkable 2 offering excellence of one type and Supernote A5X offering excellence in writing experience of a very different type. I personally prefer the softness and the organic type of feel that the soft screen surface and the hard pen actually offer on the Supernote A5X, but this is going to be super individual and super subjective, so it's going to vary between individual, from individual to individual. Now something that I really do love is that, uh, yeah, either of the pens that you actually choose, whether it's the standard pen, Heart of Metal or the Lamy uh, Star Pen, all of them offer exceptionally good quality, comfort level, and level of precision. So you can't go wrong with either of them, but check out the pen section in the video to get out the specifics so that you see which one works best for you. But as far as default pens go, it's a no-brainer. I mean, Supernote offers the absolute best default pen package from any of the competitors. As a device for prolonged type of use, it's very comfortable and easy to use for uh, prolonged testing, especially the one hour writing test. Usually by the end of that hour, it's like I'm fatigued and I have some kind of discomfort in my hand. This is the first time that I was totally surprised that I didn't start feeling the passage of time in my hand while I was writing on this one. So 
definitely the comfort level is high. Just as a complete package, same as Supernote A6X was the complete package, the usability, the everyday usability of it, because it's not metal, because it's not glass, because it's durable, I feel more comfortable using it. And because the, the, the flip book cover has that mechanical slip holding it, I have a mechanical way of holding the pen together. So even if it's rattly, it's, uh, it's not going to fall off. It doesn't depend on magnets. However cool the magnets are, there's something to be said in an everyday type of situation. If this is a device that you're going to use all of the time and it's going to be kind of knocked around a little bit here and there, I would feel most comfortable to use this, you know, throw it in a purse or leave it on a desk or here and there and even kind of, you know, just not roughhousing it, but not being overly concerned what's going to happen, where's going to be the pen, if the pen drops, is it going to break or anything like that? No. So it just is like an everyday uh, kind of powerhouse, workhouse type of a digital notebook. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Newly added functionalities such as ability to create Word files directly in the device. For me, that's a big deal because you can do things that you normally can't on these types of platforms. Even on books, you have to download a dedicated uh, app and then you have to install it and then you have to go to the app and all that kind of stuff. Functionality is there on books for sure. And probably the formatting is better uh, depending on which app you use use, all that kind of stuff. Then again, those apps usually have uh, ads and interruptions and communications that you might not want to have or anything like that. This guy? Nope. You click the plus sign and it says, do you want to create a notebook or a new Word file? Uh, really, really cool. And I hope that they expand on the functionality of it to get more um, integration with the keyboard, like control and arrows to kind of switch between words, control shift to kind of select, to have kind of option on the selections, on formatting and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it will come over time. And with Rata, that's definitely something that we can expect. Addition of the Kindle app. I mean, if that's not a pro, I don't know what is because you have PDFs, EPUBs, text, Word documents and Kindle. Um, yeah, your own Kindle account all in the same device. Customizability and uh, personalization options. This is really important to me and I keep kind of mentioning it. And for me, it really, really works well on the Supernote platform. They've nailed it because it's accessible. It's very easy. It's logical. There's no learning curve to it. If you want to make a template, you put a template into my styles and that's it. It just is there and it just kind of works. You can put a sleeping screen. It allows you to personalize it uh, inside and out because even on the outside, you have this huge selection of different styles of pens and different styles of folios and all that kind of stuff. So you can truly make the Supernote A5X or A6X your own device. It's not the Apple syndrome of basically the price that you pay is as if you loan the device from Apple and you're lucky if they give you something. That's something that Remarkable is pretty much exactly like that. You just get this and that's it. Be happy with it. Well, that's fine. It works for some people. For me personally, I prefer the option of customizing this, having a laser engraved name on your pen or things like that. It's just you know, a bunch of small touches, but when you kind of stack them together, they amount to a significant difference. Connectivity, plug in the USB into this guy and it appears as a USB drive, drag and drop and explore the contents as much as you want. Take a Bluetooth keyboard, hook it up, type in and do stuff that you want and Dropbox and cloud um, connectivity. So you have quite a lot of things to choose from. So very, very versatile. Thing that's unique to the Supernova platform everlasting nibs. Now that's a big deal because not only is it more precise and more uh, less of a diameter and all that kind of stuff, but you never need to change the nib again. That's definitely a positive. And last but certainly not least, I think it's a gigantic and an important uh, positive and a pro for Supernote, and that's the Rata themselves as a company, as a development team and as a customer support team, because the way they approach their product is unparalleled. The de dedication they have throughout any kind of stuff that they're going through and how much they listen to their audience, but smart. That's the important difference. They listen to what customers say, what they want, and they interpret it in to understanding of 
what the platform needs. And that's a huge plus for me personally, as far as customer satisfaction goes with the customer relations and customer service. With Rata, it's extremely clear cut. It's just everything is on the plate. It just feels honest and kind of straightforward, not complicated. And that's something that I look for in a long term experience is like not complicated. So how to summarize the Supernote A5X? Well, it says for those who write, and indeed it is. I think it strikes a delicate but a wonderful balance between simplicity and functionality. The platform philosophy and the user experience basically revolves about around immediacy and ease of use. And this slider here just makes it totally possible because you avoid that segmented type of thinking of I'm going to go there in order to get there. So I have to go to B in order to go to C and then you kind of forget something. You just swipe it and you have all of the other options A, B, C, and D, they're all there. So again, sounds simple, sounds kind of straightforward, but nobody else does it. And the difference in the overall user experience on a day to day basis when you're actually using the device, it really matters. And by far, this is my favorite platform to use. I didn't expect A5X to differentiate that much from A6X, but I was wrong because this kind of new format and the updates they had in the latest updates or improvements that they had in the latest update um, really do amount to a significant difference for me personally. And it seems like that the Supernote platform is basically this is the optimal experience. The A5 format or the 10.3 inch uh, is the optimal experience and the A6X is a compromise. Now it's a damn good compromise and a really, really good functioning compromise, but nevertheless a compromise. It's not all rosy, but it's continually getting better. Each time I say it's not all rosy, some of the things from that list got just get ticked off and uh, things get rosier and rosier with the uh, Supernode platform. And that's the, the awesome thing about Rada. So things that can and we can definitely expect from the platform to be improved, because don't forget, this is a pre-production unit and a beta software. So, <laughs> you know, it's absolutely mind blowing that already now it's in this type of a state which is really tight and precise but the best thing is that all of these things that for me like are not rosy they're software improvements so um, that combined with Rata's outstanding uh, reputation for supporting their product and supporting their customers is something that is quite reasonable to expect that most of it is going to be improved or fixed or expanded even further in the future at $449, which is now the price for pre-ordering this one, you get the device, you get a standard pen, and you get the flipbook cover, not the leather one, you get the canvas one, which is actually the one that I prefer, but then again, depends what you want. That is a very competitive price for a 10.3 inch device that is competing with, let's be honest, Remarkable 2 and the Note Air and the Note 3. Um, the full price is after the January 14th is going to be $499 and also this pre-order price depends on if you get a heart of metal pen or a Lamy pen and all that kind of stuff. So check out the website so that you can see. I think it ranges from $449 for the cheapest pre-order option to $509 to the most expensive option and the most expensive one being the one with the Lamy pen. That price, unlike the Supernote A6X, which I think was and still is a little bit too pricey, this is not. This definitely sits very aggressively and really, really comfortably in the marketplace of the 10.3 e ink devices. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's here and it's here in a big way. So yeah, even at $499, something that I think the product is worth, but at $449, it's uh, it's a really good deal. If you're looking for a primarily a note taking device, which has perfectly capable and usable and powerful reader capabilities and some simple text editor capabilities and ability to integrate into your workspace easily, such as Dropbox, USB connectivity, email, Kindle, all that kind of stuff, then I think it's a, it's a hard one to beat, to be honest, simply because it just does uh, primarily as a note taking device, if that's your thing that you're looking for, it just does a lot of things right. And they keep doing it even better and better and better. So 
it's comfortable to use, it's really fast to get to where you want to go, uh, it's an easy learning curve, it's very precise when writing, yes some improvements are needed for the exported results but it's very reasonable to expect that this is something that's going to happen fairly soon. Uh, the pens are outstanding, the pressure sensitivity is outstanding, the nibs are everlasting if that's what you choose it's an everlasting nib that's uh, that's a big deal and then you have that newly added ability to add the titles keywords and bookmark your notebook pages and effectively build table of contents for your written notebooks which no other competitor has and for me that's the winning combination so as a note taking device as far as note taking functionalities go um yeah this this uh, surprisingly <laughs> i didn't expect it but this is my preferred device also because of rata as a company this device supernote a5x this is a pre-order unit as i said in a beta software so it only has a potential to get more powerful more efficient more faster and more you know versatile and all that kind of stuff and yeah those are important things to keep in mind so one of the main questions that uh, most of the viewers now are going to be deciding before january 14th before the pre-order stops is like okay dude it's all great but which one do i choose remarkable 2 super note a5x or the books note air or note 3 well that's a tough one i don't have enough time i didn't have enough time to actually do the in-depth guide or anything uh, let alone the comparison videos before the 14th but i do want to give you my personal subjective impression regarding how these three devices these three key players are comparing to each other and where does the supernote a5x uh, sit in this combination for me personally uh, just please keep in mind that this is going to be different from individual to individual so this is just my subjective impression so for me it goes like this supernote a5x is the best for a note taking type of priorities with secondary functionality that you need for e-reader functionalities and some other uh, really good functionalities to slot in the, the the platform into your existing workflow. Books platform, Note Air and the Note 3 would be the other way around. If your priority is an e-reader type of capability, so reading, marking up documents and handling all that kind of stuff with some note taking, also very capable note taking, but secondary purpose is note taking, an extremely versatile type of environment device that you can install different apps and you can hook it up to whatever you want, you can cast a, a screen to it, you have the front light and all that kind of stuff, then the books Note Air or Note 3 make more sense. And finally, Remarkable 2, for me personally, makes most sense for those who are looking to sketch and draw primarily. So if sketching and drawing is your priority, Remarkable 2 is most definitely going to perform the best because it has by far the most sophisticated brushes, especially with the tilt sensitivity and all those kinds of things. Definitely best set of tools and brushes from these three. Hopefully this kind of crash course comparison helps you a little bit when deciding whether or not Supernote A5X is the device for you or not. The bottom line for me as far as Supernote A5X goes is this, for those who write. They've said it best and I absolutely concur. This is the best device out there for those who write. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when the new videos on My Deep Guide are coming out. Also check out the My Deep Guide page on uh, patreon.com if you like what I do and you would like to see the platform expand further and actually get, expand into different types of devices, maybe even mobile phones or OLED tablets or different types of things, then that's the kind of support that can actually help because then I can buy these devices and expand further. And as always, for existing patrons thank you so much you really rock stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video bye